Stop putting bevels everywhere. Why is there a bevel here? Why is there a bevel on this bit? Why are they all the same bevel? What material is this even meant to be that everything's beveled the same? This is a window. Why is there a bevel between the window glass and the surroundings? It doesn't even make sense. Ah! <laughs> Greetings hobbyists, this is a slightly less raging artisans of all. And let's spend some time talking about bevels. So this was a great question that came through and I thought it'd be best to do a video to answer it. And that is, well, what's the point in bevels? I do want to address this so that when you look at videos on YouTube, you can understand what's going on. And that is that a lot of the time people will bevel everything. Every single edge will get a bevel. And you'll see this in YouTube videos and it's not that they're doing anything wrong. It's that they're doing this for a different purpose. So let's talk about that first purpose of beveling and why we don't necessarily want to do it for 3D printing, and then we'll get on to the other purpose. So I'm gonna get rid of that bevel modifier, and we're gonna have a look at this as it would be as standard. Now, I've got, in my viewport shading, the cavity turned on to help accentuate the edges. It makes things easier to model. But let's say I turn that off, and we get this. A really difficult to see model, where we're relying entirely on the lighting of different edges, and it means that certain edges are very difficult to see. Like this undercut that was there, this one there, it's really, really tricky to work out what's going on. And this is why bevels get used a lot of the time, but this is for CG work. Things for computer graphics or rendering, effectively where you don't have the option of adding a cavity. And the reason people add a bevel there is because naturally, in real life, all objects have some sort of bevel, be it very large or be it very small, depending on what's going on. If we have a look at this picture, which is a metal object, so it's exaggerating this slightly, but it really proves the point, we can see that there are edges that are curved because they've been bent round, effectively giving them a very large bevel. But even on the sharp edges, the bits that look cut, there is gonna be a slight bevel there if you actually looked closely enough. And that bevel reflects light and that's very important for CG work because otherwise you're gonna end up with something that looks like this. So if you just come in and add a simple bevel modifier, let's shade that flat, and then let's up this segment to maybe five, we can then have this slight bevel which gives a lot of definition to our edges and makes them easier to see. And that's even without cavity. And for a game asset or a render asset, that's gonna be really important because otherwise you're not gonna be able to make them out clearly. So that is why if you have a look at a lot of 3D design videos on YouTube, you find people adding bevels instantly, or you find people doing something that should be hard surface modeling, but for some reason they're using sub D to do it because sub D effectively generates this sort of bevel when you start adding in edge loops. Now that is very different. I'm just gonna put cavity back on to make this easier to see. That is very different to what you're gonna be doing if you're doing this for 3D printing. We add bevels for CG work because otherwise it has this make-believe perfectly fine edge and that doesn't happen in the real world but if you're 3d printing because you are making a real object even if this has no bevel when you print it it will gain a slight bevel because it's now a real world object so if you are doing work for 3d printing beveling is not something you necessarily need to worry about in terms of showing off the edges so if you do want to do a render obviously it is useful to add it back in instead Beveling takes on another purpose, which also can be true of CG work as well, and that is to try and accentuate and add to the shapes to make them more interesting, but also to be able to give some idea of what material they're being made out of. It also gives an idea of size and weight. So we're gonna have a look at three doors. We're starting with them exactly the same, and we're gonna have a look at how adding different bevels will change the way these look, and then you can have an opinion on what you think is best. So we're gonna leave this one with our bevel modifier that we've got, and we're just gonna put five, and we're just gonna up that bevel width to something about there. So it's still working fine, and we can see what it looks like, but it looks, I would say, a little soft, and a bit too rounded, especially in some of the detailing around here, and as mentioned, this, which is gonna be a window, just shouldn't really have a bevel in front of it. So let's look at our second object and apply a different process to beveling. So we're not gonna bevel everything. Instead, I'm gonna go into edge mode and I'm just gonna select these outer edges here because I want to add some weight to this. I want it to look more like a chunky and machined bit of metal, being that this is something like an airlock door or a door for a bunker. So instead what I'm gonna do is press Control and B Scroll down so we've got a single chamfer. 
and I'm just going to make a chamfered edge around the outside. And you'll see already, even though this has got, well, more to it, and is actually taking away material, it looks a bit chunkier than our first object. It gives it a sense of weight, because generally when you make larger objects like these doors, chamfers get added around the outside, well, for a variety of reasons. But for example, if this was a cast iron material, then that would need to be poured into a mold and having these sort of edges make it easier to pull out, which is why when you see really big doors, they'll have these sorts of shapes. Now we could add another bevel to this as well. So let's come in and go to edge mode again. And what we'll do is we'll just bevel these edges here. So the ones that are part of our corners of this door. So let's just add a bevel here. And instead of chamfering them, we're actually gonna round these. I'm gonna go up to let's say 16 for this. And I'm gonna make them probably about that size. So we notice we're not doing them really small, we're giving them some decent width so they add to the form of our object. And hopefully you'll agree, this adds a really nice effect to it. It gives this hard edge still so we can tell that this is probably some sort of metal, but it helps add to this sense of weight. Okay, let's try something again. And we're gonna go here and do the same thing, but we're gonna add to it even more. And then we're gonna come in and we're gonna select these edges as well. And let's bevel these. So we've got an additional layer of beveling on here. So we'll go to somewhere like there. So now let's have a look at these and compare the two. In fact, I'm actually gonna press Q and add a slight bevel here, but that's only just to make things easier to see. Again, this is why you sometimes add them for CG work, so things are easier to make out. And I want you to have an opinion on this. Which one do you think looks better of these three doors? The one where everything is beveled entirely the same, the one where we've got varying different bevels, including chamfers and then some wider bevels, and one where we have got a chamfer, but we've got more of these wider bevels being added to the different surfaces. Oh, there is a slight issue with that bevel here, but we're not really worried about that. But just good to point out that you do need to fix bevels as you're doing them. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, the central one is by far and away the better looking door. Obviously, we've got a lot more detail to add, but even though it's got less material to it, it feels more chunky than that feels like it's got more weight to it and that actually it's probably made of something like metal whereas this one just looks like it doesn't really have a material to it and you can notice that when you see certain science fiction designs and even in computer games whereas this one with our range of different bevel thicknesses and different segment mounts looks much more interesting to the eye it gives a better sense of a real in inverted commas object and if you come over to this one it just looks a bit too soft it doesn't really look like anything that you'd expect to find in the real world. Maybe if this is some sci-fi future where you've got plasticky materials that are really hard, this could work, but it just doesn't feel right. And it definitely wouldn't feel right with these hard edges then on the inside because it just doesn't seem to match up. So when you're going into a project, what I want you to think about is where are bevels actually adding to my design? Are they gonna to help to convey a sense of material and weight while adding visual interest? Or are they something I'm doing just because I've seen on other videos that they are meant to be thrown on every single edge? And finally, just to come back to this one, do realize that we do want bevels of different sizes. If I came and let's say selected this edge here and decided to bevel it, which might look quite nice, trying to give exactly the same size bevel as the outside edge, or if I was to have done it at the same time, does not look as interesting as if I was to say, do something like a smaller bevel because it's an inside corner. So do also have a think about when you're beveling and I do appreciate it takes longer of not beveling every single edge in one go, but actually selecting different edges at different times so that you can control that bevel width. I just thought I'd add on this quick bit of gameplay from the game Dark Tide, and you can see here they do this really well. You've got some really interesting chamfers and bevels that really add to the sense of weight for these objects and make it seem the size that they should be. So something a bit more theoretical today. If you find these videos on theory interesting, do say something in the comments section. If you hate these videos on theory, also say something in the comments section. I take no offense and it helps me make the channel something that's gonna help the most people. Have a great day, guys.